And first I gotta apologize to all you people that can actually do math today because I totally botched this. So this whole time I was sitting there going, okay, I got a engine running a thousand RPM that's firing twice a second, or it gets two pulses per second on the ignition system, or two pulses per revolution on the ignition system to make it go. So, you know, I went from that one thousand times two, that's two thousand pulses per second. RPM, not RPS. So the first thing you have to do is take a thousand RPM and divide by 60 to get from minutes to revolutions per minute to revolutions per second, and then multiply by two. So the whole, the net of this is at 100 hertz, 100 hertz should be 30 revolutions per minute. So, or at not 30 revolutions, 3,000 3, revolutions. God, I'm just having epic math badness day today. So, the net here is this thing's working. More than likely, it's been working from the get go. And due to my bad math and picking a frequency that was way, way too high for this thing to start out with, um, it just didn't register because the frequency was just off the chart for the filter network because as you could see before I disconnected all the caps at a thousand or two thousand kilohertz the first pull of the uh, input filter input noise filter here basically took the signal to zero so I'm real quickly here solder both these caps back on. I'm also going to try and find a better cap for that. Um, some of the notes in the forum say that this cap here does go bad. Um, my meter said it was good, but one thing I will do is just tack this back on and see if things still register correctly after the fact. But before I do that, I'm just going to poke through the circuit so if anyone else is debugging one of these they got some waveforms to look at to know if it's working or not. So there's my input at 100 hertz. And oh, here, let me get my cursor functions. Let's go frequency and get rid of that one. Okay. So there you can see we're at 100 hertz dead on. 16 volt swing and you know just for giggles I want to drop my amplitude and see where this dies it's about 3 volts 3 4 volts so I'll leave that at 5 volts I got 10 volts coming out. I'm going to have to get myself another scope or at least another so scope or source, either or, and see which one of these is out of whack because something's not right here. But anyways, so at the this point right here, the first pull of the input filter, you should get from a, a nice 50% duty cycle square wave in you get something that looks about like that. Where is my trigger? Trigger menu. There you go. Woo. So now the second pole of the input filter. same sort of thing just the amplitude amplitude is reduced to be more so this is basically pin 2 on this guy so pin 1 is ground pin 2 pin 3 
Ooh, that's an interesting little waveform on pin three. Now pin three is is this circuit right here, which is basically a resistor from power, a cap between pins four and three, and a cap to ground. Or it's not really ground, it's this regulated ground, I guess. Um, I'm guessing this circuit was used in a originally positive ground vehicle and then they converted it to the negative ground because normally you'd see this resistor in the positive rail so every, all the voltages would float down instead of this case when this thing regulates the voltages are floating up from ground but the one interesting thing I noticed is uh, where's my hold? hold you notice this nice little step in here you know, it's flat, step, flat. We're seeing, I'm wondering if this sort of works a little bit like a 555 timer, where this charges through two caps until it gets up to a point, and then it flips over and discharges through one, or instantly discharges one and goes the other. Or this could be some sort of charge pump circuit where it's, switching caps in and out to get higher voltage but I don't think so I think it has something to do with the with the timing because one of the things I noticed out in the forums is this 47k resistor right here they say to put a second 47k in parallel with it when you switch to a V8 engine so apparently these Spitfires or some other car that use the same uh, speedometer or sorry tachometer um, it came with a V8, and the tachometer that goes in the V8 image, V8 engines, you can't get anymore. While these apparently are still available. Now I don't know if that was new or just used stock or what, but where is that? But that's that's what's said about it. So this is definitely something to do with the timing circuit. For you know, for this frequency, here's how much voltage slash current I put out and by changing that resistor you can, you can increase or decrease the settings. It just has that interesting little notch in it. Okay, pin 4 is the other side of that. Ooh. So, you know, pin 4 is definitely driving the net to ground. So, there, you know, inside of this chip at pin 4... Oh, here, let me just stop it. So inside this chip on pin form, there is some sort of active gate. It's probably just a transistor. Yeah, the age of this is probably definitely a transistor to to quote ground this signal here. Um, and it you know you can see the caps charging up. They stay there for a while, and then quick it pulls it to ground. And if I bet I match this up with other channels input. Let's see if I can get this set up correctly. Now let's see if I can get both hands in here without shorting the works out. Oh, that'd be a total bummer. Accidentally bump something and blow out this IC. So there you can see the two waveforms superimposed on each other. Um, the bottom one's pin 4, the top one is pin 3, and that little step correlates with the, the back end of that charge curve. So, take what you will from that. Okay, let's go to pin 5 is the meter output. That should be pretty uninteresting. Oh, there is a little bit of weirdness going on there. Um, I actually kind of like to vary this and see what that does. Let's see if I can do that. Again, I do not want to blow anything out on this now that it's working. Okay, we're happy. So if I lower... Ooh. Well, 
interesting. Don't know what that was. When I lower the frequency, all right, let's get the trigger. Ha! <laughs> it's totally pulse with my just pulse width PWMing the coil on the meter to get the different settings. So as I increase my frequency here, you can see the pulses uh, shrink together. So I would not have expected that. You know, I'd expect a smooth sort of analog output from this chip, but apparently not. Um, it sort of makes sense. Um, one of the second link I think Mike sent me, they if you follow through some of the links in that posting, they, they go to a link of the predecessor to this uh, tachometer where it was all discrete components. And it was basically a couple transistors, a bunch of resistors, a cap, and a potentiometer. So the fact that this is just sort of doing a pulse width mod, it's taking the tach input modifying it a little bit and producing an output like this isn't totally surprising versus uh, a more modern IC like the one I ordered to replace this guy in case he was dead they actually do a full honest to god here's a frequency in here's an analog voltage out you know they just basically have an extra stage of filter capacitor and operational amplifier built in or yeah op amp built into the back end of the chip so that the, internally it's it's doing just this it's pulse width modifying um, at some base frequency based on the input which causes a cap to charge up or did you know charge up over a given amount of time and then the op amp and the filter smooths it out to an analog value so this is basically the new chip minus that output smoothing uh, let's see, pin 6, just resistor. Hmm, that almost looks like the inverse of pin uh, 5. All we know is there's a 180 ohm resistor on it between it and the ground rail. 7 is just power, and pin 8 is a resistor to power. So, you know, again, we're seeing that same sort of pulse width. So I'm wondering if pins 6 and 8 are part of the output tree. You know, just totally guessing here. I'm wondering if they have, you know, power rail, resistor into the package of the part. And then, you know, some sort of maybe Darlington pair or push-pull uh, output structure. And then this guy goes down to ground. And then it sits there and flips back and forth, turning these two transistors on to cause this to go, you know, drive a nice square wave out of it to PWM the uh, gauge movement. So that is all the pins on this thing. Um, Hopefully someone else that's poking around these and trying to debug one. One, get your math right. And two, you got some waveforms to look at. So I think I am done with the scope for today. So let me just throw this away real or throw this back real quick and then we'll wrap this up, put it back together, and then send my brother an email that he might still have an electrical gremlin in the car. For those that heard the story in the first part, we had a nice electrical fire in there. And we rewired everything, got everything working, except for the wipers and the tack. Um, also, we didn't get the hazard switch working, but that was more of a physical problem. Uh, the little knob to pull the hazard out and actually turn the lights on and make them blink was long gone. So he found a knob online, ordered it, got it, and as far as I know, that's working other than the light in the knob. There's just apparently a little light bulb that goes in it, but he's not exactly sure when that's supposed to light up. So he's supposed to send me the wiring diagram for the car again so I can look it up. I forgot to save it the last time. I thought I was done after 
rewiring it for 36 hours. But apparently not, so I gotta take another look. Um, the other thing we found out was the he, he tore down the wipers to rebuild them and it was totally mechanical. Apparently inside the wiper there's just a gear which you know as it rotates pulls a rod back and forth which then drives the wipers. The, the bearing on that gear was seized, was rusted and seized, so he fixed that up and then only one wiper worked. The driver's side didn't. Well it turns out the previous owner when he reassembled the car forgot to put the little linkage bar between the gear and the shaft that runs out to the wipers. So he had pulled the shaft back and tied it directly to the gear which pulled it out of the first wiper or the driver's side wiper. Um, also when he wired it up to the switch in the column he got some wires swapped around so that the stop switch didn't work so as when you turned off the wipers they just stopped wherever they're at instead of finishing the cycle so he got that all sorted on his own which honestly was kind of impressive for me because he's not an electrical guy so what I'm doing now is I'm just disconnecting that cap so with no cap whatsoever he's still working so I'm guessing this cap was not the source of the issue either but I'm gonna double check it I'm guessing it's the 15 volt cap Let's see, that's the minus side, that's the positive side. Value of 74. I mean, leakage is kind of high on it. Maybe, maybe this guy was bad. I never did find the uh, voltage rating, so let's go. Oh, now the leakage is good. Just for... Since these have been known to be a problem, and this guy is, what, nearly 37, 38 years old, I think I am going to replace it with this guy. Um, I'm going to do a little digging in my bin here quick and see if I can find uh, another cap with 22s. Same ratings, only with nice long straight leads, which tells me it's a lot newer. Um, most of these caps aren't nearly that old. But some of them are kind of old in here. Um, some, well, most of these caps are at least 15 years old because they came out of the kits I used in college for my labs and I have been out of college for 15 years in August. Time flies when you have to work. Okay, nothing's jumping out of me here. That would be a better replacement, so I'm just going to go with that cap as is. Pack it in there and call it good. So first things first, take this wire out. Pop the other side of this cap off. solder. New little ball of solder at the top of each one of the pins 1 and pin 7. Pin 7 being the more fun of the two to get to. 